Sometimes people like me who are scientists and believe in God are accused of believing in a God of the gaps, which amounts crudely put to, well, we take some phenomenon in the universe, I can't explain it, therefore God did it. And it needs to be emphasized there that although gaps may be interesting, and we can come to those in a minute, the major evidence for God is not in what we don't understand, but in what we do understand. First of all, in the very fact we can do science, that, to my mind, is, is one of the great evidences of a divine mind behind the universe, as, as I argued earlier. And then it's the whole show. The heavens declare the glory of God, is the way the Hebrew poet put it. And that would be my initial reaction. I think perhaps the best way to explain it is in terms of Sir Isaac Newton, probably the most gifted scientist who's ever lived. When he discovered his law of gravitation, he didn't say, ah, now I understand how the planets move, so I don't need God. Not at all. In fact, the more he understood, the more he worshipped God who'd done it that clever way. So he wasn't believing in a God of the gaps, I can't explain it, therefore God did it. He was saying, I can explain it to a certain extent. And these explanations are so wonderful and they can be compressed so brilliantly into mathematical formulae that that is evidence of God. It was Kepler who first of all suggested the planets moved in ellipses that said uh, that it was so wonderful that God had revealed the way things worked and that we could describe them in the language of mathematics. And then he talked about thinking God's thoughts after him. All of these people, their worship for God and their admiration and faith in God was increased by what they understood, not by what they didn't understand. Now, of course, there is a, a residue of something to be said about these gaps. I would want to, possibly because I'm an Irishman, distinguish between two kinds of gap. There's the bad gap, that is, at a certain stage in science, we can't explain it. But then, as science develops, we will be able to explain it. I call those bad gaps. But then there could just be gaps in knowledge that are widened by science or increased by science. And one of those, which I discuss in detail in my book, has to do with the origin of life. In 1953, when Miller Urey won the Nobel Prize for their experiments on bombarding a mixture that was supposed to resemble a primeval soup with electricity and discovered some of the building blocks of life of the proteins, the amino acids, that was hailed as the discovery of the secret of life and they got the Nobel Prize for it. But we're now over 50 years later and the difficulties seem much greater because at that time they didn't know of the digital nature of life as reflected in the DNA code. So that there, it would seem to me, is a gap that's being revealed by science. But it's a much more complex thing to go into that. So to sum that point up, I, I, I think I would want to say this, that no, I don't believe in a God of the gaps. That is, my faith in God does not depend in me using God as a place filler for the bits of the universe that I don't yet know how to explain scientifically. As far as science goes, in terms of the evidence that science gives pointing towards God, I would want to say it's the science I do understand that points me towards God, not the science I don't.